we want to get capital to entrepreneurs. I think that's a great thing. I want to get the right capital to entrepreneurs in the way that they need it without pressure for them to have to want to be a certain kind of business. Welcome to a special CEO.world podcast series, Money and Power, with Joy Anderson, founder of the Criterion Institute, and Vicki Saunders, founder of CEO. Systems and patterns of power and money are sometimes hard to see. Joy and Vicky identify the systems that make up this world and the money and power dynamics within them so that we can better understand how to transform our world. Good morning. We're here with Joy Anderson. We are going to talk today about technical assistance. Why don't you lead? Tell us what we're talking about. When people talk in impact investing circles broadly about the problems of moving capital, it almost always gets defined for for ages. It's gotten defined as that the problem is deal flow. So many efforts to find every possible woman entrepreneur because you can't find them on your own. And if they are, they're too small and they're not ready. And oh my goodness, they would need so much help. And we can't possibly take that on because they're at the wrong stage and they need to look like a different thing and blah, 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 blah. So, so often investors define the problem as deal flow, which fundamentally locates the problem as the business. Pausing on that. So, so just coming back to that in a second. So then once the problem is the business, the next thing we do is we say, you know what we need to do? We need to help businesses. We need to provide them with the support that it creates them as a word that ensures that they are a word that I am, that just boils my brain at some point, (laughs) investment ready. So we say, here's the problem. Businesses aren't, quote, investment ready. And so we need to be able to provide them enormous amount of support because we're incredibly kind people and all we want to do is help businesses be the kind of businesses that can take in capital. And all of this on the surface sounds like a really, really nice thing that's helping lots of businesses. But the more I look at it, the more it looks like a ton of money to fix the business, but no money to fix the capital. It never questions whether or not it's the wrong kind of money being put out in the wrong way with wrong expectations of growth. (sighs) I'm just going to take a deep breath on that because it's so true. The people with the money are always right. And the kind of money- They're so important. Yeah, absolutely. This whole fix it thing, Mm. just fix it to fit into my piece comes really back to the rules piece, right? Who sets the rules to keep things in place? And then it just drives from the top where that is all the way through everything. I won't say from the top, from one point, the start point, all the way through. It's infused through the whole system. Like every part of the system starts with this rule of... Of get ready for me and here are my rules. But like we don't actually ask at the beginning, is this the right kind of capital for this kind of business? I mean, I, we see this all the time. People with no recurring revenue applying to get a loan. I'm like, that's not going to work. This is not capital that you just get to like plug in and then go, oops, I can't make my first loan payment. You have to have recurring revenue in order to have this kind of capital. And that's, there are people who are like venture funded applying. I've burnt through 1.4 mil. I need a hundred thousand dollar loan when I still don't have revenue yet. It's like, we don't understand the capital where we just think money is money. But then we celebrate, we put out statistic after statistic that celebrates how much debt we've created for entrepreneurs and call it access to capital. So I'm a little bit of on a rant on that. But the core thing here is also how we use resources, building on the last couple of podcasts that we've done talking about where funding goes to. I am stunned at the amount of money that goes to fixing businesses. And it comes out as what we need to do is help the business. As you know, Vicki, we work a lot in the international context and in the global context in the developing world, particularly donor agencies, USAID, Global Affairs Canada, DFID, you can go into all the acronyms, but the development agencies within governments 
as they put out money into supporting entrepreneurs in the world, a significant part, and I am curious to find out what percentage goes to providing technical assistance. So TA or the ability to support businesses become investment ready. And we've participated in a few of these programs because they seemed really logical. Like we're going to help businesses become investment ready. And I thought, oh, cool. We could like shift the power dynamics and have businesses be able to understand the terms of capital and be able to push back and negotiate better terms. No, no, no. That is not what it is. It is over and over again, a firm, an organization that provides technical assistance, and I'll be careful, because there's a lot of people who do this really well and are great at it, but it's become a whole industry to provide support for businesses to become investment ready to achieve the end goal of access to capital. And often not access to capital, but building the business well and we'll decide if you need capital. But the whole assumption is that the problem is the business and that we need to spend the money to support the business to become a kind of company that's investment ready along the lines of what investors want. I think the benefit to the development agencies is that they can put money out in known ways to organizations that they can trust. So if somebody comes to them and says, I, trustworthy organization, have X financial expertise, know these investors, and I am likely from the global north, and I really want to do this process of supporting entrepreneurs in the global south. You can channel money through me and we will be able to tell an amazing story about how many businesses got helped. So it works within the business model of, and one of the biggest business challenges actually in development agencies is finding ways to get the money out the door. And so this is a way to get money out the door. I was going to say, this is one of the big challenges that I, I am like such a newbie to all this stuff. And I didn't realize this before. It was like, oh, if you haven't received a $3 million grant before, you can't get a $3 million grant. Right. Because you're not trusted to have that money. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how does that work? So the same people keep getting the same money over and over and over again. How did that happen the first time? Someone got money. <laughs> So I think there's a piece of this that's about what are the channels of capital, how is money flowing already, and having a business that looks like it has a certain amount of expertise position themselves as technical assistance provider is a comfortable move. But I think there's a second challenge, which is baked into the assumption of that the project is getting capital to entrepreneurs, that that is a core part of the impact investing project. Obviously it is. Like I, I feel like I'm saying something stupid. Like we want to get capital to entrepreneurs. I think that's a great thing. I want to get the right capital to entrepreneurs in the way that they need it without pressure for them to have to want to be a certain kind of business. This is also deeply problematic now because the narrative has switched or shifted, when I talked about the pendulum shift of like where we've been over the last 20 years, it has shifted so far to the only capital that matters to an economy is venture. That's part of the problem. So this gets worse and worse each time because technical assistance capital is pushing you to be a venture firm. And I think I might've mentioned this before in previous things, but I had an interview with a, an incredible journalist who literally said to me, why are you doing debt? Because debt isn't growth capital. And I thought, wow, like really the only kind of capital that matters that will grow a company is venture. It's just crazy. So again, on the investment readiness piece, let's talk a bit more about this because I want to get underneath it. Like the focus on the business versus focus on the investment piece and the technical assistance. Can you go deeper? Like what's underneath this that really stops us from getting where we need to go? Right, it's a great question because in some ways I'm finding myself really not wanting to trash people who provide support to entrepreneurs. Because it can be an amazing thing. There's a lot of power dynamics, who gets to do it, whose voice matters, who's considered the export. 
I don't know if you have something, we have, I don't know if you have the equivalent to SCORE. So the U.S. has this massive system of providing volunteer support to, to businesses called SCORE. But it's retired business leaders who are helping entrepreneurs and don't even don't, don't get even me started. Get me started. I can just tell years. I'm not going there. Yeah. <laughs> 18 years ago, we had a SCORE volunteer help start criteria. Don't do it. Don't go there. Okay. No, Yeah. not going there. So people who do technical assistance are not all bad is what you're saying. Thank you. Okay. Really trying to say that. The reframe I want to get to is, are we asking enough questions? Are we doing the work to shift how the capital works versus only to shift how the business works? And It's not that I think the technical assistance or accelerators and all of the other ways that we provide support to businesses is a bad thing, because I really don't, but the challenge is it it distracts the attention that needs to go to, are we putting out the kinds of capital that we need? Have we actually improved the processes of this fund manager in such a way that they're better at listening to the needs of entrepreneurs and designing funds that will meet those needs. We don't put money in, here is a problem in a market, let's bring together the creative minds to figure out a way to use finance to address that problem. Instead, we say the problem is that the entrepreneurs within that space need to be investment ready. So let's fix them. And then our capital will be able to fix the problem. Yeah. I mean, it's because we have a bias that the only kind of business that matters is a venture funded business. And in, in that we have a bias that venture funding works and that we don't have to question it. Right. And all data proves that's not true. It doesn't return any better than municipal bonds globally. And we still don't tell ourselves the truth on that. So I hear you like this challenge, you go into very expensive capital. And it's highly capital inefficient. How we use it is very much like a casino, but that's a whole other podcast that we've already done. I could just do that every day. I could do it over and over. There isn't debt capital deployed in any kind of risky environment around the world, right? Like the debt capital that sits there, or it sits at 12%, which then totally hoses the entrepreneur. Like they're in a whole world of problem if they're getting this like extremely high debt. Like microfinance, which everyone loves to say is just this amazing thing, has gone to 28% interest, right? In some ways, all... Financial vehicles, all the instruments that we use and all of the terms in finance are useful in some point in time, but we don't put the scrutiny, the lens, the is your capital entrepreneur ready? There we go. Why aren't we asking that question? It's very interesting because again, the answer to everything these days is just do the opposite of what we do. (laughs) (laughs) that's my answer to everything. Just do exactly the opposite of what uh, everyone else is doing. You come in and you say, we have money sitting over here. We need to get you ready for this money over here. And instead of saying, uh, what do you person, what are you trying to do in the world entrepreneur? What kind of business are you trying to grow? Here are the different options in front of you, which you do so beautifully with the toolkit where it's like, here are all these different kinds of capital that are available to you. Most of us don't know that because all we hear about in the world is this one kind of capital that's the most desirable because it's supposed to get the best outcomes. We just created this beautiful narrative. We played a Hollywood movie and we just say it over and over and over again. If you have this kind of capital, you can be a unicorn. And then we don't talk about any other kinds. So we're not all well-versed in the kinds of capital that actually work for the kind of business we're running. Yes. And my push is, rather than always asking the entrepreneur to be doing that work, which I think they need to, and all of that's important. We're not putting the burden on the investment manager, the fund manager. So what if donor agencies said, you know what we're going to fund is ensuring that every fund manager working in the emerging market actually has deep knowledge of the structural inequities, the gender dynamics that are operating in that market. We don't do that. We say, let's figure out how they can find the women entrepreneurs that they can then tell them how they need to be fixed to get their capital. 
So how do we ask the question more clearly of, is your capital entrepreneur ready? Put the burden on the asset manager to make sure that their capital is actually solving a problem rather than putting the burden on, we've got this great money, it would solve this problem if you would just be different. And why doesn't that happen? My answer is because they're- Power. Because what happened, I mean, this is the story I know in donor agencies, is people went out, and, and I think, you know, I think this happened in the primacy of the financial expertise, the financial voice that people who work in finance have the knowledge that really matters, has been so dominant. What donor agencies did is they're like, cool, we're going to develop an innovative finance program. Let's go interview a set of impact investors to be able to find out what capital needs, what finance needs, what investors need. I understand why they did it. Governments, local municipalities around the world have done this. Global, you know, national governments have done it, but so did like Dubuque, Iowa, where I grew up, like did a study of like, how do we build an impact investing market in Dubuque, Iowa? Like, and the question was, what do investors want? And then what do entrepreneurs need to be to be able to meet the needs of investors? I just think we need to stop asking the question that way and flip it and say, what are the needs of entrepreneurs and how do we design investments to meet their needs. And if we flip that around, because part of the thing is the money is going to people who have a certain incentive system already. And so you have to shift their incentive system to get them to think differently because they're just allowed to play all the way through with the same rules. And that's why I get excited about donor agencies because folks like Global Affairs Canada and others and, and USAID and others could actually be using their money to make sure that finance is getting smarter but they too often assume that finance works and the problem is fixing the world. And if we can shift that even a little bit within donor agencies, more money would be going out to say, hey, this microfinance scheme actually isn't working that well. We want to provide incentives for you to fix it, not the business. This is so amazing. Mm. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Joy. Thank you for listening to the Money and Power series on the Shio.World podcast with Vicki Saunders and Joy Anderson. If this conversation resonated with you, please share it with a friend and subscribe on your favorite listening platform. To learn more, go to Shio.World and CriterionInstitute.org.